I have seven o'clock, so we're going to call the October 17 meeting of the select board and joint meeting of the EFUD and select board to, well, no, just the meeting of the select board to order to start. Uh, first order of business is to approve the agenda. Um, before we do, I would like to amend one item. It's under manager's items agenda for our, the 1020 uh, meeting regarding ARPA. But I'd also just like to add a future meeting agenda to that as well. Um, okay with everybody. I will make an motion to approve the agenda as amended. Also moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Next is to approve the consent agenda items consisting only of the minutes of the October 3rd meeting. I'll move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So we'll move right along to the public comment section. This is a chance for anyone either on the computer or in the room to speak on anything that's not on the agenda. We'll have you um, state your name and we're gonna give each or, or anyone who'd like to speak two minutes to do so. Okay. Yes, sir. So just, just before you start, mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether it's like we uh, know this or not for many members of the public, but uh, Mark Podgeworth, the executive director of the uh, Library Ambulance Service, passed away really? um, on Friday. Uh, and it was uh, very unexpected and a uh, big, big loss in the community. And um, just um, anyway, our thoughts go out to his wife and family. And uh, it's it's just a, you know kind of a kick in the gut. So. Um, I'm not going to go into any details now. I don't think this is my place at a public meeting, but just so you're aware. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, you well, a somber note, but we'll transition back. Um, yeah, oh, thank you. That's fine. Um, anyone who'd like to make a public comment? Yes. Yeah. Sure, come on right up. Oh, you can sit here or stand or yeah, you can sit if you'd like. Yeah. 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 Can you just sum your name? Sure. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm Breck Stewart. Uh and I want to talk just briefly about uh, Airbnbs and short-term rentals in Waterbury. I raised this issue on Front Porch Forum and I also am trying to get on the agenda for the next uh, select board meeting to discuss this. But I think the bottom line in front is that this uh, 51 Main Street vote has kind of raised the issue for everybody of affordable uh, housing and, access and housing accessible people in Waterbury. There's an ongoing price housing crisis nationwide, but also especially here in Vermont. And I think we're acutely feeling that in town as well for a lot of people who both uh, are looking to purchase homes and looking to uh, rent property. And I think that the uh, Having short-term rentals and uh, Airbnbs in residentially zoned neighborhoods uh, definitely presents a challenge for people who are looking for housing in town. I'd like to kind of draw a line between what I think is, you know, renting out a space that's in a commercially zoned district, or maybe renting a room in your house during leaf keeping season or during winter to folks that want to ski. I think there's a big difference than that in leaving a house that a single family home or a multi-family home that's in a residential district vacant for a large part of the year uh, while using it basically as a business to uh, churn people through. There's hotels. Uh, we have <clears throat> the old stagecoach in. We have plenty of places in Waterbury where folks uh, can stay and enjoy everything that's good about Vermont and everything that's good about town here. But I think housing in especially residentially zoned areas should be for folks that want to make Waterbury home and want to live uh, in our town. And by uh, I have a number of ideas about this that I'll try to address when I have more time to talk about it. But I think that uh, Burlington and other towns have kind of uh, come up with ordinances and uh, laws and suggestions about how we decide uh, where, based on what things are uh, zoned for and where they are, uh, how we proceed with uh, permitting and approving uh, Airbnbs and short-term rentals. I think we should prioritize housing for folks that want to live in town and make Waterbury their home over uh, using single family homes for generating profit. 
Thanks. Hey, I keep having technical trouble here. Are you kicking me out of this meeting? I <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Thank We're going to talk later about um, um, our next and so we'll talk about that. Can I um, jump in and, and say thank you? Uh, or Megan? Megan, yes. if you'd like to speak on public forum, I'm going to wait for Danny, the chair, to recognize you. Just for the record, for everyone, I hit admit all when folks are coming into the room. Glenn, I hit admit all when folks are coming into the room. So if po folks are popping out, that's not the reason. If you're interested in speaking, raise your hand, and Danny, the chair, will recognize. So I'm going to go back to Danny. Thanks so much. I'm um, sorry. I just keep getting kicked out. I can't hear I don't are know you guys why. I'm me? admitting all. Yeah, yeah, we hear you when I hit admit all when I can. So Okay, so I, I just want to be able to do a public address or raise my hand. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure I got into this meeting. I appreciate Great, it. <laughs> Technical trouble. <clears throat> uh, Tony Scribner, I'm just following up. I was here a month ago and I asked about uh, social media policy. I'm wondering what's happening with that. Yeah, thank you, Tom. So that's going to be in that one of those last items we were just talking about for future agenda that I'm going to place on that um, 11 7 agenda. 11 mm -hmm. okay. yeah. because we just had another incident of a vice chair posting this on a special interest group for partaking in a time of service. Right, so as we talked about last time, because we don't have a policy, there's nothing for us to monitor or enforce, it will be on the 11 7 agenda. Okay. Um, the second thing I want to ask you was I had I brought in a conflict of interest uh, complaint, and I was told that some of you respond and say what the process was moving forward with that. And I've heard anything. So has anything happened with that? I don't know what the process is for a conflict of interest complaint. I, you... I, I wasn't here for that meeting. Yeah, so but, and I'm just asking about a, I'm hearing a process. So, um, yeah, we do. And I apologize because I don't have the policy committed to memory and I don't have it with me because I didn't know it was an issue for tonight. Uh, there is a conflict of interest policy. Um, I believe the policy speaks mainly to the board's uh, elected officials in terms of their uh, having to recruit themselves if there's a conflict. Uh, my guess is that there is probably a portion of it that applies to staff. Um, you know, staff, there are certain things that staff might have a conflict with, but I don't have the details. Mm -hmm. So, um, Tom, I apologize. I didn't read those minutes of the meeting. I didn't, wasn't aware that you've made a concern. If you have a specific concern, uh, I would encourage you to give me a call tomorrow, tell me what the goal is, and I'll look into it. In terms of yeah, what the materials, I understand that you did, but I'm saying, telling you, I didn't know about it until right now. No, I understand. I know you are. I appreciate that. All right. Thank you. Megan Wright. Hi. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to thank the gentleman who spoke regarding Airbnb. Um, we have a similar issue in our neighborhood. Um, we are of a, a association of five homes off of Nealon Flats. Recently, we had a neighbor sell their home to someone who is going to basically put a hotel next to our house. They are not going to be residents. They're going to be Airbnb being the property 24-7. Um, we share a leach field with them. There are three out of the five homes that share a leach field. I have contacted the town, I've contacted the state, I've contacted anybody who will listen to me, but um, I would like to see something uh, on the agenda regarding Airbnb versus commercial and residential. They are not residents uh, of Waterbury, and I'd love to see something happen where we could prohibit um, a commercial uh, endeavor happening in a residential neighborhood where we cannot monitor who is in our neighborhood and the shared cost of road maintenance and um, a leach field that should be permitted. They're advertising 12 people in a home that is resident for four bedrooms. Um, there seems to be a conflict of interest there. Um, I don't think there should be 12 people 
in one home when they share a leach field with two other homes that share a uh, cost. Um, so I'm just hoping that could be something that could be on the agenda in the near future. And I wanted to support the gentleman who spoke up this evening. Thank you, Megan. Mm -hmm. Megan, do you mind if I ask you a couple questions? I would love it. Hi, Chris. Uh, <laughs> do you have an association? We do, and our covenants, unfortunately, Chris, actually, I'm a um, neighbor to the the area that you put together um, in the past few years. Unfortunately, our neighborhood came um, to be in 1988, and our covenants are, um, they're Very still nice. going, yeah. but we did yeah. not anticipate this. So we now need to amend our covenants, but Unfortunately for us, the people who have purchased this home are two attorneys who I'm sure can outspend us. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that was going to be my both both my <laughs> stuff, oh. both my subdivisions had <laughs> we're in a world of covenants in there to <laughs> address all the issues you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, uh, we can be three out of five of us can vote it, but then our covenants say we have to litigate it. I'm sure they can outspend us. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, me too. I'd love for the town to make it so that that's a commercial entity. I mean, when you put 12 people in a home on a leach field shared with two other homes, that seems like an inequity we should not have to share. Um, and I have no recourse. As I've said, I've talked to the town a couple of times last week, talked to the state. I've talked to um, anybody who will listen, but I have no recourse at this point other than the covenants and they will outspend me. Megan, uh, listen, is there anything in the planning zoning regs that pertain to nothing of that sort? I would say, I guess I would just say two points for information while we're on the topic. We as a select board have created a Waterbury Area Housing Task Force. We actually had a deadline for applications. We will likely extend it, but for those, including those who have spoken today, I know I put this in an email to Breck, but just to say, if you're interested, I think we've talked about that. Part of that group will be what the group is interested in, and that may be one thing. Obviously, Steve, our planner um, and zoning administrator is not up here, but we have planning commission members here, and I would say right now our regulations on the book generally do not even define short-term rental as a use. Right. So in terms of regulating it, we're not even defining it. There is a rewrite going on later on the agenda. We'll get there. Um, and they are considering including it as a use, which then could be a use that's potentially regulated. But current status is it's not defined yeah, as a I, use. I don't believe it's I don't believe the town presently has the ability to regulate it, unfortunately. Um, with regard to the leach field issue, um, not to pass the buck, but the, the town does not have a role in permitting on-site septic systems any longer. Back 35 years ago when I first came here, we did, but the state uh, has taken that over completely. The only role the town has with regard to on-site sewage is calling the health officer if they fail, and then it becomes a public health violation. Um, I sympathize with both of you folks who've talked. Um, uh, the house next to me on Ripley Road uh, just sold, but for the five years prior to its sale, it was pretty much uh, Airbnb. And I had the same concerns. The leach field is, it's a separate leach field, but it's on, on my property. I would caution you, however, when you're talking with the state, Megan, uh, you know, if you've got a shared leach field, um, the leach field should have been permitted to handle the number of bedrooms that all of the um, all of the contributing homes to the leach field uh, uh, make up. So if that if that house is a four bedroom house, um, the 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 law as far as potable water is concerned is the first. The first three bedrooms of any home are considered for double, double occupancy, so that's six. And then any bedrooms beyond that, you only have to plan for one additional person. So at minimum, the leach field should be able to handle uh, seven persons living in that house. And I know 12 is five more than seven, but 
just be aware that uh, you know that all factors into this equation as far as your leach field is concerned. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, no, I did talk to the state and they told me that um, the house as it's four bedrooms has, there's no um, rhyme or reason. You have four bedrooms that does not equate, you can put 20 people in there if you want. It doesn't matter, unfortunately, if you're, a, I think it was MDR versus an LDR, there was no rhyme or reason, which I found crazy, um, but it, it is what it is, but um, hoping that maybe on a uh, town level, we could take it up and, and go from there. Thank you. Thank um, you. Glenn, Glenn, I know your hand was up. If you have a good connection and would like to speak, you can now. Yeah, okay. thank you, Danny. And I apologize. I didn't mean to interrupt to y'all. It might have been my air. Uh, pods. I apologize if that was the case, but um, so really quick, just, I, you know, I missed what was said previously. You know, I did see that the agenda calls for, uh, you know, an 830, I think, slot for uh, Anderson versus the town. And I, I guess the question that I have um, is last select board, it was Grayson versus town. So I just want to be clear on the semantics. Um, Mostly because of the three court state. cases in the Superior Court of Vermont right now. State, yeah. With I'm sorry, somebody interrupted. I can't hear. Can I just finish that was his mistake, Glenn. So At the last it, meeting, it should have said Anderson v. Waterbury. It was my mistake. Okay. Well, I, yeah. V. So I guess I hear you now. I, I didn't. I know last week it was all about interrupting, and I didn't want to step on anybody's toes. But I guess what I'm saying is. Uh, since I'm in two cases, if there could be more specificity in defining it as Anderson appeal of Grayson or DRB ruling or something to that effect, because it sounds like I'm actually suing the town, which I'm not. And I just want to be really clear about that because there's counterclaims with EFUD, and that's because EFUD sued me. So I just want to be clear about that. Uh, and then the only other uh, piece that I just wanted to share uh, you know, I might get cut out, so I'm going to try to stick around for that. Um, but if, you know, so long as that is something that uh, we can address for the future. But also, um, you know, we're expanding the farm. And I think it, it, Bill know uh, the Agency of Agriculture, Foods and Markets here in Vermont has permitted us fully for, you know, what we're looking to do here. Um, as part of it, then natural resources, people looked at the water quality and they looked at those issues. So I guess the question I'm looking for you guys to maybe help address is going forward, we have a few well sites that we'll be digging uh, for those activities, uh, inclusive um, of one location that's in a class two wetlands. So I know there's stuff with the disc golf and class two wetlands. I don't know what's permitted uh, or what's permissible rather. So you know, if there's, it's easier for us and more economical to cite it in that location. So if there's no objection by the town, I suppose we'll do that. But ultimately, if there is, you know, we could go to this other location. So that was just one thing I wanted to share with you. Uh, and that's it. I'll check back in if I get cut off. Thanks. I wasn't clear on a question on the second half. Were you, did you, were you? I think, he's, I think he's concerned about whether or not the town had any input as to where he drilled as well. Okay. And it, mm -hmm. I think the agency it does their the, okay. the town has no right. role in citing yeah. where private wells are drilled, dug, or installed. Thank it's you. All up to the agency natural resources. Is there anyone else online or in the room have something that's not on the agenda they'd like to speak to? Well, seeing nothing else, we'll go ahead and move forward to select board items. First is considering nomination of applicant for school board. Um, so select board should have seen an email with Jake Pittman's um, letter and he's also here this evening. Hi, so we think you can come on up if you'd like and introduce yourself. I will also sit down. <laughs> yeah. um, also, I'm not really sure how much time I have in five minutes. Um, yeah, we, It'll be short. we're not gonna, we won't time, but we'll, okay. we'll be efficient. <laughs> okay. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jake Pittman. Um, I am a 2013 graduate of Harwood. Um, 
And I I'll give a quick background on myself. Um, after Harwood, I attended SUNY Blackford over in New York, where I got a bachelor's of science in human development and family relations. And after college, I lived in Burlington for a couple of years. And then in 2019, I came back to Waterbury because I love it here. I love Waterbury, it's my hometown. I really enjoy being a member of this community and I knew it's where I wanted to be. And now I'm here. Um, I kind of wanted to start off, start off my pitch for um, your recommendation to the district school board by uh, just the main idea, the main reason why I'd like to be considered as a member of the school board is because um, I, in my personal opinion, have noticed that there is a bit of a disconnect from several entities such as the board and the administration as well as the faculty and staff, I, I think there's been a disconnect with the student body in particular the last several years. And recently, um, I've become connected with the student body because I have been an assistant coach for the Harvard Cross Country team uh, starting last fall. And we're in the, I mean, the second season of that right now. And I also was a head coach for the middle school track and field program this past spring, which I plan to continue doing. And so I was able to establish this connection with the students. Um, and again, my, my main point of emphasis is that I believe I can offer um, just a much needed perspective to the board on the way that younger people think about their education and the way that they think about the world in general, um, being that I have this connection with them through my coaching, as well as the fact that I am a younger person. Um, it's been 10 years since high school. Feels like yesterday to me, to be completely honest. And, um, you know, through my education and my major with team and development, um, coaching really reminded me of that I have a passion for working with youth and adolescents. And I plan to be a member of this community for quite some time. And I'd like to be involved, uh, particularly with the school board and help assist them in making decisions where they consider the not only the impact that it might directly make or indirectly make on the student body, but also just the perspective that the students might gain from certain decisions that are made. I've agreed with decisions that have been made the last several years. I've disagreed with decisions. Um, I try to stay as level-headed as I can. I try to consider all scenarios for why a decision is even being discussed. And um, again, my goal is to just act as more of like a liaison for the student body as a member of the district for it. Um, I think that's been missing. I think decisions have been made hastily, and I want to help bring more of a student voice to the board through my connection with coaching. And yes, that is my primary goal. And uh, I will quickly mention that, um, you know, that there is kind of just a natural conflict because technically I am an employee of our you know, coach. And um, I've spoken with Superintendent Mike about that reality. And um, what he's graciously offered to do is contact Secretary of Education. Uh, actually, this is not for her last one. I'm not even sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But thank you. Um, <laughs> and they're requesting like a variance to be made on my behalf as a coach, which I know has been done occasionally in the past for board members. Um, and we'll see where that ends up. But um, I think the pros rather than the cons of my connection with the students through coaching, the contrast is there. There are so many more pros. I, I have this connection. I get to speak to students. When I speak to students, it's very low stakes because I'm not their administrator. I'm not their parent. I'm not their teacher. I'm kind of, I think I'm a peer to many of them, again, just because of my age and my relationship I get to build with them. So. Again, my main point is that I want to offer the student perspective to the board. I want to help the board understand how if you push this button, this reaction is going to happen. I think I have a good grasp on this generation of students. And um, I just want to get involved in my community. And that is why I'm hoping you will recommend me to fill that Waterbury spot uh, for the school board seat. And I, if I enjoy it and I think I'm contributing, I plan to run for re-election, which starts up in March. Thank you. Question from the board? Uh, where do you think the future of education is going and what 
type of perspective is coming from these kids that made you feel necessary to bring it to the table. And number three, the cost of education is a huge issue to a lot of people. Um, and has that factor into your wanting to be on the board? Well, I think there were three questions in there. Um, yeah. The first, mm -hmm. um, well, the, the state of you know education. Um, let's see. I mean, I, I just think that there's this element of trust that the student body needs to have in its administration and its board, and I think that. Mm -hmm that is not recognized as much as it should be by our district at times i think there has been a breakdown of trust between the students and the administration and the board and all of these you know authoritative figures that kind of govern how their education works and you know i came from a time at harwood where i saw that start to happen as a high school student and after high school i saw it continue to happen and trend in the wrong direction and I just hope to provide value to the board in helping them understand the way that students react to certain decisions that are made. Um, going to your third question about the cost of education, I'm not sure if this was along the lines of what you're talking about, but I, I have thought about that a lot because personally, we talk about finances, we talk about money quite a bit. Quite a bit when we're on the school board, the budget and you know, all that that means. I'll tell you right now, I don't own a home. I don't deal with property taxes and school taxes, and I've never really been directly impacted by them. I've never had to come here and drop off a property tax check for thousands of dollars. That's, that's not a, something I've done before. And I want to just say that I recognize that. And those are the types of conversations that when they happen, and I know they'll happen often, I plan to listen, take a back seat, for lack of a better term, and just let folks who are more well equipped to have those discussions carry out those discussions. Again, I can't relate to those taxpayers who have owned homes for maybe even decades who might be sitting on that school board or the many community members who currently own homes. That's an area that I'm great in. I've never had to do it. I'm currently renting in Waterbury. Um, one day I'd like to own, but those, again, those are the kind of discussions where I, I'd like to just listen before, certainly before I speak, because it's not my area of expertise. Yeah, I'd like to just learn more as a member of the school board. Uh, have you had an opportunity to take a look at the, the proposals to, for school consolidation or the uh, renovations of the high school? And the position on um, I. Well, I'll be honest with you, I, I have not specifically looked at those proposals. Um, I've heard a lot about them, of course, because that's a constant topic within the town of Waterbury. Um, I know that's been a hotly debated topic. Um, obviously, all of the drama last fall with the bond votes and what that meant for the school. And, um, you know, I, again, I don't know much about it. Um, I understand that approving something of that size is a monumental decision and that it needs to be carefully vetted and considered and obviously put to a vote. Um, people were very passionate about it last year and I know they continue to be passionate about it. And I do need to do some work understanding those proposals more. I haven't looked at them specifically, but if I am named to the board, then I plan to do just that. I plan to get very involved in understanding what these proposals mean, how much money we're really talking about, what it means to the students, what it means to taxpayers. I know those are things I need to consider, and that's what I plan to do. Um, my understanding is there is student liaisons to the board. How would you envision your role or perspective? You seem to really be emphasizing student voice, like yeah. being different from that. Right, yeah. Well, um, I thought about that question too, actually. Um, it's I'd like to say that I'd like to advocate for the students, but I also want to be careful when I say that because it's not that I want this obviously is going to be some game where I'm just I 
a student whispers in one ear and I just say what they say. That, that's not what I'm hearing. About. You know, I, I just want to offer a voice and a line of thinking that I think some board members have not considered when thinking about how the board's decisions will impact the culture of the students at Harwood. I understand we have these student liaisons. I know one of them very well, the cross country captain. Um, and I've spoken with members of the team, um, members of the, you know, those student liaisons, um, and also with members of the team to kind of understand how some students feel about decisions that are made. And, you know, I, I want to give opportunity, of course, for those student li liaisons to fill their role um, accordingly. Um, but, you know, I would also like to assist them, you know, when those student liaisons have topics they want to bring to the board, I'd like to be able to help encourage them to speak on those topics, speak clearly and with intention. And I just want to be seen as not, for lack of a better term, I don't want to be seen as like a scary figure to them. I don't want to be this like authoritarian presence. I want to be seen as more of a peer to those students. And I think I can just accomplish that through uh, my connection in coaching and yeah, I mean, I, I just, I'd like to offer them help specifically um, as they, as we get new student liaisons, as they transition, I'd like to help be at their side and help them be active members of the group. Have you been able to watch um, school board meetings or attend any? And um, I'm curious, uh, how you feel about sort of the other side of, of really stepping up to be part of those often intense and heated conversations um, right. with the others in the room. Yeah, I mean, I well, I attended the last school board meeting. Mm -hmm. um, this, uh, well, I'll, I had interest in joining the school board about six months ago, and then I did not realize, I, I was under the impression that they were looking for a prospective member of the library, but I was mistaken about that. But then it suddenly came to the attention that, um, they were looking for a member and I was contacted directly because of something I had sent in six months prior. Um, but that being said, this was kind of a, this was, I don't, I don't want to say thrown on me, but the opportunity came up quick. I didn't, I wasn't even considering this three weeks ago. It was, I was just spoken to recently mm -hmm. about it. And um, so I've been to a board meeting. Um, I sat in for the whole thing because I wanted to see how it was run. And um, it reminded me of a time when I was not a student liaison, but I, when I was in college, I was sitting on a board um, for a literacy foundation as an intern uh, for a literacy organization my senior year of college. And it all came back to me. I remembered how the structure works. I remember how when agenda items are amended, how discussion is um, seconded and talked about, and just the structure in general of board meetings. It all came back to me. And, on the topic of when discussions do get heated, you know, I'd like to think I'm well equipped for that. I'm pretty level headed. I know when to just, you know, sit back, let people speak, or speak when I need to speak because I feel passionate about something. And I know how to not, for lack of a better term, fly off the wall. You know, that's not something I'm going to be doing if I am a member of this board. I'm not going to be raising my voice and going back and forth to people. And I've been in situations like that before, and I, I think I'm prepared to to navigate that the best I can. Other questions? Just, can you, um, just to make sure, um, where do you live in Waterbury, and are you a registered voter? I live uh, on Kimberly Lane in those big apartment complexes on Blush Hill, okay. and yes, I'm a registered voter. All right. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thing. Can you both, have to be both right? remind us? Of, oh, yeah, sorry. Remind us of how the process Yeah, works. so um, the process right now, even though Waterbury is part of a consolidated school district, the school board actually has the authority to appoint um, someone to fill vacancies. Uh, they are able to and have asked this board to make a recommendation and have input but it is the school board's um, prerogative. Um, just as an aside, uh, the LCT town fair was just a couple of weeks ago and the league's policy is to continue to uh, advocate in the legislature to change this, that 
that it should be select boards who are able to fill vacancies because you know you've got a board at Harwood now and there's members from Faston and Warren and Waitsfield and all the other five towns that will be helping to decide. Uh, I believe um, Jake is the only applicant, however, so it doesn't really matter whether <laughs> you recommend or not. He's the only one I've got to consider. But uh, I'm hoping in the future the legislature will change the law and allow the municipality from which the vacancy occurs to fill the position. But that's not the case now. Yes, yes, um, I'd like to commend Jake for stepping forward, and uh, I'll move that we recommend to be joining the uh, select board that uh, is uh, eligible. The school board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Do we have further discussion? Yes. Yes. Um, you know, this short conversation for me doesn't do this topic justice. Um, I appreciate your passion and desire to want to be on the school board. The meetings that I went to at the school board were in my Opinion as dysfunctional as can could possibly be. Uh, there's something very broken with the school board system. Um, I have huge concerns. Uh, I understand your desire to bring students' concerns to the table. Uh, I mean, I've had people say to me that kids are running the schools as it is. Um, that's a little frightening based on what, what we've seen in some of these schools across the country. Um, I'm you know, certainly not targeting entirely. Um, but I'm probably going to vote no simply because it is a broken system. And uh, no offense to you, you seem like a great guy, and uh, uh, I'm sure you know, you'll get your opportunity to be on the board. I'd be curious to see how everything goes, but uh, it's a difficult issue uh, dealing with rising school costs. Uh, you know, I hope these students aren't feeling shortchanged uh, in the education system. Uh, I've seen things happen at that school over time. And we, again, I could really get into this conversation <laughs> right. about, you know, everything you said before about housing costs, about this, that, and the other thing comes full circle for me because my first home I built myself. My second home that I bought was less than a home, and I completely rebuilt that myself. Uh, I'm on my sixth home now, and I built every one of them myself. I'd be curious to know how many students coming out of that school now could even think about doing something like that. Instead, they go to college and they get a degree in college and uh, come out with huge amounts of debt, wonder how they're going to pay their debt off, plus afford their own home. Uh, and most of the houses that I built, I did at a fraction of the cost because I put a lot of sweat into it. Uh, an effort and uh, had the knowledge and talent to do that. And that's part of the reason why we're faced with such a housing shortage because there's so few people out there now that either want to do that type of thing or can do it. And anyway, I, I digress. Uh, I'm one of those students. Yeah. Uh, and I can see a lot of that myself. Yeah. We share similar opinions on that. Okay. Anything else before we take a vote? I just want to acknowledge that Mike is here. So we can oh, just have him. Hi, Mike. Um, raise a hand in terms of vote. Hi, Mike. Hopefully you're hearing us. Um, I don't know. Did yeah, you just yeah. join? Uh, no, he joined at 725. Oh, I have it. Thank you. Um, but just so that you know for calling the vote. And if you wouldn't mind after this, asking for the phone numbers. But let's take a look. Got it. 
Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor to recommend Jake for school board, aye, please. Aye. 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 Mike, would you like to? I just want to make sure that you are going to vote. I'm sorry. Yes, I was going to vote, but I you know, That's fine. Thing, probably did see the written material and I came out of the presentation. So I don't feel I have good enough uh, flavor to vote for me. Thanks, Mike. Opposed? Opposed? No. And Mike as an abstention. So that is three in favor. So we'll send, do we then send a recommendation via email bill? Sorry. Yeah, we'll, we can let the school directors know. Okay. Thanks so much for your time. Good luck, Thank you. I'd love to talk about that. <laughs> Any time. I don't know if you know where I live, but. You may ring anytime. Okay. We will move forward to discuss, discuss the middle of application of bylaw modernization grant and consider commitment for local cash match. Um, while our speakers come up, whoever oh, sorry, is the 417 phone number, if, I think it's star seven to unmute, please just let us know who you are for the next. Because we were able to chat. It's mm -hmm. Kelsey, that's my wife. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Hello, welcome. Hey, thank Hello. you. So, Katie Gallagher, Vice Chair of the Planning Commission. Dana Allen, just on Planning Commission. <laughs> um, we appreciate the opportunity to talk again about the application for the Bylaw Modernization Grant. Um, so, I think you all received a almost finalized, but still draft version of the application over the weekend. Um, so I'll give, I guess, a, a brief kind of update since we talked about it already. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to, to ask away. Um, but again, this is um, an application to hire a consultant to assist the planning commission over about a, a six month or so period uh, next spring into summer to help with um, engaging the public to talk about um, the updates to the bylaw uh, revisions that we are currently undertaking related to phase one, which is primarily the village um, area. Uh, a big piece of this work is related to increasing housing options in this area. And so I think, you know, as we talked about last time, 51 South Main, it's a good example of why we need to have transparent and open communication with community members and, and help them to understand why and, and what we are proposing. Um, so the consultant that we would hire would have um, expertise in zoning, in uh, graphic uh, uh, illustrations, mapping through GIS, um, things like that to be able to more uh, clearly and accessibly illustrate the differences between our, our current zoning bylaws and what's being proposed. We can look you know, at a, uh, an image of the, of the village uh, area and see what like an infill um, development project might look like. Uh, things like that, that can really help to um, more clearly articulate what it is that we're doing so people don't have to look at, you know, the hundred pages of bylaw revision. Um, so we are asking for, from the town, this would be a, a, a town match of $2,500 for the grant amount of $25,000. Um, we have consulted with a potential uh, consultant who is able to give us um, estimated costs per hour uh, quantity and, and confirmed that our, our timeline and uh, proposal was kind of in line with what they would consider and that um, the, the funding amount was an appropriate um, uh, amount for, for the work that we were asking for. Um, we we're also hoping to have you know, a good amount of, of support and engagement with the select board and with other community organizations to make sure that this is a, an inclusive process. Um, so um, I think I will 
Oh, I guess the final point, just, you know, in addition to the actual engagement and outreach, there would also be the consultant support with helping to summarize the feedback that we've gotten from the public in order to then um, make the recommended revisions based on that feedback. I'll leave it there. Question. Is this part of a complete rewrite or just certain segments of the zoning range just pertaining to housing and so this is a this is a complete rewrite at this point because essentially what we're doing is merging town and village residential or residential all the main districts. Um it's obviously after sort of that body ceased to exist and was former and being formed. Um we're essentially putting all the zoning districts together now. So some are getting changed, some are getting superseded, they're all getting merged together. So now we're gonna have essentially one zoning bylaw document for the entirety of the town, inclusive of essentially EFUD and you know, everything else. Um, the way that it's currently split up is that we have a phase one area, which is everything south of the highway. So like Katie said, essentially the village, um, former village. And then the phase two area, which is north of that. And so right now, the planning commission for the past couple of years has been focused on the phase one area. This bylaw modernization grant application would essentially help with outreach for P1. P2 would then follow. But the groundwork that we lay in P1 is huge as far as phase two. Because a lot of there's a lot of overlap between some of the zones, there's a lot of same uses, that sort of thing. So what we're learning in this process, what we're doing in this process, both from a policy standpoint and from an outreach standpoint, will then feed into phase two. And it's our hope that phase two will go faster than you know the phase one process thus far. But it's kind of a long way of saying yes, it's a comprehensive view. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think so that'll completely. You know, the municipal plan will have to recognize all of that as well. Um, well, the plan, I think, you know, we're basing the the zoning bylaws based on the the current town plan. Yeah. But the specific grant is to spend the twenty thousand dollars ish on a consultant to get the public input into the yeah. process, so that we're able to. Then move it along to the next stage, which is approval by the planning commission, adoption by the select board. Right. So it both helps to move along the phase one process so that we can pass that, get those on the books, and then um, also help with moving forward to phase right. two. Right. But the goal is to get the phase one done. done. So yes. at least that will be up to date and modernized, and what the consultant brings to the table should be able to be carried through to the phase two and then there'll be public health and should that once the commission finishes that. Point. So once stage one's implemented, does that completely discard all the zoning rig that are currently in place or is there some conflict or overlap in it will that until phase two is it will it will simply change the zone bylaws in the districts that are self of um, yeah. so. so in a way, think of it like the interim downtown zoning bylaws that you have now. That came out of this whole process, but that would be, you know, we'd then be looking at essentially that for the entire thing. Right. But it will be a permanent bylaw. It will be a permanent bylaw. Permanent bylaw. Permanent bylaw. So, Pending process. Right. So the, I guess the critical thing to understand is that while the zoning bylaw, we call it the unified bylaws in the account, is to get it all done. You don't have to do it all at once. You can do it in phases. And the planning commission chose this because it's just a little bit smaller apple to be able to work with. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, and uh, so we vote this through, and uh, ostensibly we'd be looking at having that phase one bylaw in place at this time next year. That's the goal. Yeah. <laughs> if if not sooner, if we can. Frankly, I mean, I think that the, I mean, I'll speak for myself on the planning commission. I think others would say the same, but like I think we feel a sense of urgency. 
for Ted. And is it 10% match? 10% right? match. I think that's 100, and that's, that's refundable if we complete this work. I think in fact, we might have two years to do it. But right. okay. So the match will have to be included in next year's budget. Um, Bill, where does that go in the budget? It'll go in the planning department's mm -hmm. budget. Yeah. Other questions or comments? And I was not at the last meeting where this was originally brought up, so I just caught up by reading the document, but I don't know but that, from what I understand is that we were deferring to this meeting to make a vote to right. put this in the budget. Okay. Um, okay, so I'll entertain a motion. Yes. I'll move, <laughs> I'll move uh, to uh, approve uh, uh, to support this application and uh, commit $2,500 in the 2023 budget. A motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and second. Authorizing appropriate staff to sign the application. And uh, authorizing <laughs> staff to sign the application. We have an amended motion. <laughs> and a second. All in favor? Oh, sorry. Uh, Any further discussion? Yeah. yeah. I just okay. wanted to note that the Planning Commission does now have a page. If you go to zoning and planning on our municipal website, waterbreakvt.com, um, that includes, among other things, purpose overarching goals and specific objectives for the bylaws just talking about like why we're doing this which these folks spoke to in more detail but if anyone is not at all familiar there's a broader sense around what they're trying to do um in the whole town and again this is one phase i have a couple of minor notes on the application and would love to chat with planning commission members later but strongly support i think in my view it's a worthwhile investment of municipal funds because we know at a minimum rate right, we have two hearings the planning commission has to have one i want to feel better equipped to answer the questions we get about why we're doing things and where it goes and what it means for my property so to me that's what we're investing this money for and if that ultimately means we also happen to adopt a bylaw and get our money back i'll be really really pleased but uh having to support that. So thanks to all the work of the planning commission members getting it done. Thanks for that input. <laughs> Other discussion before we vote? So yeah, the, the zoning regs have always been a huge, I'll call it convoluted uh, moving target. And uh, I'll be so impressed if you guys can complete this in a year and make it stick. Um, mm -hmm. They've been working on it for six years. It's not a year process. So, again, we feel a sense of urgency. We appreciate your effort. Thank you. Thank you. Um, great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or any abstentions? Excellent. The motion carries. Thank Thanks you. so Thank much for your work. Yeah. Is there anything, Bill, that we need to follow up with you on for that? Is there any action that we need to take? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I keep pressing up the wrong thing. Next is the uh, local emergency management plan. This was an item in an August meeting um, that Gary had presented to us. Um, and what he let us know is that there were no changes to the actual plan, only revisions to the um, staff names and board names. So what I asked everyone to do is review the 2021, which is the link I sent um, since he said there were no changes. What we had said on August 15th is we would vote on it in the next meeting, but we never put it on the agenda. So we didn't actually vote on it. So our goal today is to vote to adopt, readopt the emergency management plan. Um, but because we don't have a copy of it, I recommend that we adopt it uh, pending a review of the changes of staff and board names, just so we get eyes on that. Um, we're not comfortable doing that. The other option would be asking him to send us it, or to look at it and then vote um, at the next meeting. So any thoughts from any board members or Bill on that item? Not oh, it's like <laughs> well, uh, Gary said that uh, essentially 
is going to remain the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did review the, the 2021 version, and it seems complete to me, so I'll be willing to move forward. Uh, uh, um, so I'll go ahead once we make a motion to approve. I'll take on um, just getting in touch with Gary and reviewing the names um, with him because I think there's some changes even since August 15th. So we'll need to make those updates. And, and could you uh, identify when you do that uh, who the communicator is? I mean, that's a, a, my reading of it. One of the essential roles is that we have a big emergency, that there's one person tasked with you know, providing communications for the town. Absolutely. Um, so I'll entertain a motion. Well, okay. I will move <laughs> to uh, hmm. approve the uh, 2022 version of the emergency management plan uh, pending the uh, assignment of the names. Moved and second. Any further discussion? Second All, motion. In All in favor? Uh, Aye. Right. <laughs> Any opposed? Thank you. Mike, you got a lot of background noise going on there. <laughs> Stone it down. Should I mute you? I'll unmute him. There we go. It's a shadow of the shelf. It's a little scary. It's not, it's not it's it's all right, in the interest of time and efficiency, <laughs> or lack thereof, we're going to move on to uh, joint business with EFUD. So we'll invite uh, commissioners up to join us at the table. Everyone. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> Where are we on your agenda? Uh, just starting the joint business, so you'll want to call your meeting to order at 7.30, can't you? Yeah, oh, can't you read the time? Oh, 7.57. And the Yankee game was delayed due to rain. How fortunate. Call the meeting of the Edward Ferrar Utility District for the joint meeting with the Waterbury Select Board here for Monday, October 17th. And I guess uh, we'll, we've got the agenda there. Yep. We do. Keep it on. Okay. Uh, so there's two items, uh, well, three items to discuss to an open session and then. Uh, a quick executive session, uh, I hope. So the first item is the health insurance uh, for 2023. Uh, this is the time of year that uh, I usually present to the boards a recommendation for health insurance for the next year. Um, and typically, probably since 2014, when the new format came into play, I probably presented it only twice before this to a joint meeting. Uh, the last several years, it's been rather pro forma. The increases haven't been too, too significant, you know, two and three percent. So I would present it to the select board, and then uh, the select board would say okay, and then I present it to the EPEC commissioners. I think this year it's one of those years where I feel it's important for a couple of reasons for there to be a joint meeting. One, if you read the memo, you'll see that, uh, well, we know inflation is running hot, and uh, also there's been significant premium increases. Uh, my uh, statement last year suggesting that the 
very low uh, increases that we had a year ago, uh, uh, an actual decrease from Blue Cross and less than a 1% increase from MVP would result in a big increase this year because by the time they did it, inflation was already starting to, to move up and, and, and it's true. Um, as I've always tried to uh, practice from, you know, I deal with, with all of the elected boards uh, and work for, for you uh, independently and uh, uh, but from me down, as far as employees are concerned, I've always tried to uh, model and preach, if you will, that we all work for one municipality. So it would not be a good idea for the select board to offer this plan and the uh, park commissioners to offer that plan and the library commissioners to offer a different plan, uh, which is possible and it's legal, but I don't think it's wise. Um, the third reason why I think it's important to do this collectively is that uh, while I will be here to present this to the employees at a meeting probably next month, and you know it, it's early November when they can start choosing plans for next year, so uh, it's timely. Uh, but I'm I'm going to be gone, uh, retired after too long. And I think it's important to be able to communicate to the uh, employees that this is the, the, the offering that the boards collectively made. Um, I also gave you some information in here that um, I think there's without question, except for the, the year that the, select, uh, that the uh, highway department decided to form a union, and then a couple of years later, the police department decided to form a union for the village. Um, when they did that, the, the labor market was not anywhere near as volatile as this one is. Um, we don't have a police department anymore, so the police union went away when the police department was uh, disbanded along with the village. Uh, the highway department, uh, they entered into a, I think it was a two-year contract, and then they went through a contract renewal. And after the first renewal of the contract, they actually voted to um, to onion, onions to decertify. So they they said, we're not getting what we want out of a union except paying dues, and they decided they were better off as they had been before. Um, We've seen more turnover this year than we have uh, for a number of years. Uh, when I say this year, going back to maybe July of 2021, when Dina took my baker uh, retired as the zoning administrator, we all remember how difficult it was to hire a zoning administrator. Um, now we've had the retirement from town clerk and uh, appointment of the utility building clerk. That happened in August. Um, had, you know, pre-pandemic would have had 20 applicants for that job and had four, had to re-advertise. I, I just hired someone to that position today. I expect they'll probably start uh, next week. Um, but a uh, long-time employer of ETHA, uh, Strive by Yacht, the uh, uh, water treatment plant, the water superintendent, has uh, resigned to take a job at Howard Union. Uh, and there's other rumblings and challenges in, in the, in the uh, workforce here. Uh, this isn't um, restricted to Waterbury. Uh, I, I had uh, three professional conferences in the last month, two of them here in Vermont, the Vermont Talent City Management Association meeting last week. And a couple of weeks ago, the BLCT Town Fair. Uh, this topic has been discussed uh, with my colleagues and other board members uh, at both of those conferences. So it's a challenge. Um, and then it's going to be a challenge for the taxpayers because obviously the taxpayers have to, have to fund this. So I made a recommendation to you that we. Uh, increase the monthly allowance uh, that we provide to our employees by 10%. Uh, 
and I recommended uh, changing the the uh, formula by which we uh, uh, provide a stipend to employees who who don't take the health insurance. Uh, this year, for those folks, they get $135 a month stipend, which is taxable. It's not it's not an untaxed benefit like health insurance is, which uh, you know is worth. Uh, to the people who have families, uh, um, 2022, it was worth $2,000 a month. So I did uh, in recommend increasing that stipend for single employees to $145 a month, and then make it 10% uh, um, of the monthly allowance for the people taking the two person, the parent and child and the family plans. Um, I have not done a calculation yet about how much this will cost the community because it's dependent upon who takes health insurance and who, who doesn't. And uh, I, I don't know that yet. If everything were equal, it would be a 10% increase. You know, if everybody who took a plan this year takes the same plan that they took last year, our costs would go up 10%. There's usually some movement between plans, you know, people whose kids get over 26 years old go down to a two-person plan. Somebody who's had a baby ends up going from a two-person plan to a family plan. Um, so it's it's hard to pinpoint that. But anyway, I'll stop talking for now. Uh, that's my recommendation. And I'll let you ask questions. And ultimately, it's your choice. So this ends up being a benefit to the employee, like if you're looking at their salary plus benefits, this would be added on as a benefit. Yeah, so right now, you know, um, I the person that I just hired the utility billing clerk, you know, offer um, $22 an hour is the pay. And then, um, on top of that $22 an hour, we're gonna uh, pay uh, the employer's share of retirement. That's mandatory, but that's a, a retirement benefit is theirs. And then this health insurance is a, a benefit that there, anybody who works 30 hours a week or more is eligible to take this. Uh, we do have, I think there's about between EFUD and the town, there's about 25 people who are eligible to take the health insurance benefit. I think there's, I didn't look before I came to the meeting, I believe there's five people who are eligible who don't take it. And those people get $135 a month right now. So yeah, uh, and and you know I I I put some information in this memo, and I don't know if you've all read it there, but in that little table on page two, um, you know this is a rich benefit. There's no no question about it, but you can see that the richness of it is declining here, in that these plans right now, you can if you approve this, you can see the 2023. Uh, percentage of the platinum premium uh, runs from 82.6% to 93.8%. And in 2022, the, the, um, it ranged from 90% to 102%. There's a couple of things I want to say about that. It, it seems like, well, this is a very rich benefit. You're providing, you know, your recommendation is 93% of uh, of a platinum plan, which is true for a single employee. Um, but the single employee is getting a benefit that's worth in 2023, $910 a month. Whereas if you have a family, um, you're getting a benefit that's worth over $2,200 a month. Um, but that person is, you know, um, getting, uh, you know, 82% of the of the cost of the platinum plan is covered by the community. Not everybody takes the platinum plan. In fact, I encourage employees to take uh, you know, lower value plans, uh, high deductible plans in particular, because once you kind of rip off that band aid, so to speak, and if you have a good year and you can fund a health savings account, 
then after that, you know, putting money into your health savings account um, allows you to have a higher deductible plan, and, and it, uh, I think it works well for, for most people. But what you need to also think about, there's two other things to think about. One, while the value of the plan in relation to the platinum plan, which is the highest price uh, plan that's offered, is dropping. The other thing that changes is that deductibles, co-pays, co-insurance, what gets covered is reduced every year by the insurance company. So the, the insurance itself isn't worth as much, it doesn't cover as much, it doesn't provide as much first all coverage. So there's always a little chip for the employee for covering those costs. The other thing to remember in this, I, I just state that, you know, if you go in the other room, I can find you the VLCT compensation plan and it shows any, any municipality has responded to the survey and probably, you know, 150 towns respond out of the 250. Um, you know, we're offering this benefit that is quite rich when you compare it to the platinum plan alone. Uh, and, and there's no way to deny that it's a rich plan. I'm not trying to do that. But we don't offer dental insurance and we don't offer vision offer vision care here. So um, if you take a high deductible plan and you've got a health savings account, we can say, well, we're contributing X dollars to your health savings account. You can use that money to pay for your dental work or your vision work. So there's other municipalities, unfortunately, with whom we're competing more and more often now. Mm -hmm. uh, and Cindy knows this. It's not only just with other municipalities, but it's with the state too. Um, uh, and, and to a lesser degree, the, the private sector. So anyway, um, I'll stop again and see if you have more questions. <laughs> so in terms of other municipalities, what do you know about? Where do we cut fall? Is this insurance that we offer enough to tip the plan to somebody coming to Waterbury? Are we in the middle or? I would say we are certainly not the, we do not offer the richest of compensation packages by any stretch of the imagination. And that goes especially for um, uh, public works employees. And we'll be talking about this at a different meeting, but you know, right now there's a there's more and more of a call from our employees to, to say, we want some real, on call pay. We want pay to be available to be in town when it snows or to respond to a water or sewer emergency. You know, we don't offer that at all to our highway employees. If they get called out uh, at night or on a Saturday or Sunday, we expect them to be around and they, they come to work and they generally get overtime for that, but we're not paying on call pay for them. On the water and sewer, uh, side of things, uh, our employees are required by our permit to go to those facilities every day. So they've got to go there seven days a week. So there's, you know, two water operators and two sewer operators. So every other week, they've got to go to the plant. We pay them four hours of time to do that. And it's at an overtime rate because they've already worked 40 hours in the Monday and Friday time frame. And most often when they go there for that four hours, they get paid for four hours, they're pretty typically probably there for two to three hours. So we get a little bit of a bump up, but you've got other communities all around us that are you know, paying $150 a week for our call. And, uh, it's coming. Mike has his hand up for a question. Jeremy Bell. I think so. Okay. Um, quick question. I know this is a, a difficult question, but it's based upon your assumption, what do you think is the total amount of budget authority that we would be incurring to the, to the residents and based upon our current taxes, what kind of a 
tax increase would might that in Seoul uh, well, I don't know right off the top of my head, Mike. I, I said a second ago that um, didn't specifically have that information. But, but so if somebody, if, if you, so as far as the tax increase is concerned, there's there's a lot there's a lot of components that go into setting the tax rate, and I'm nowhere close mm -hmm. to um, being able to do that. And while personnel costs are clearly the highest expense we have in the aggregate in our budget across the board, except for the capital budgets, probably, um, uh, the health insurance premium is really a small portion of the overall rate. So uh, a 10% increase in the health insurance rate will, all things being equal, make a 10% increase in the health insurance line. But it's not going to be close to a ten percent increase in the in the tax rate. Um, in the general government, which is basically the office staff, health insurance in two thousand twenty two was ninety three thousand five hundred dollars. Um, in the uh, recreation department, it was. Uh, $7,900. Uh, parks department, it was $11,000. Planning department, um, $33,000. And the highway department, uh, health insurance in the highway department was $74,000. And in the library, was almost ten thousand dollars. I don't know if anybody wrote on that. Down that was around three hundred thousand altogether. Yeah. That would be thirty thousand bucks. Right. So three hundred thousand um, dollars. You know, that's about um, four cents. Right. Seventy thousand times four would be two eighty. So yeah, it's about uh, four cents. That's right. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, all, the increase would be right. all things equal would be not quite half a penny um, on one framework. So, yeah. I think we ought to be generous, though, because we have a, a critical recruitment and retention problem. The recruiting and re re recruiting. And replacing people is an expensive process. It is very expensive. And uh, the, the health insurance and retirement is how you bind employees to the job. That's the most effective way. The um, and then, and there was a time recently when we were the employer of the last resort. Now we're looking at the street and seeing the employee of last resort. Right. We've got to compete for them. Right. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, I've tried to, I, I think this is a reasonable proposal. 10%, uh, I it's going to, uh, for, for most of our employees, it will cover uh, most of the increase. I mean, there's some plans, if you pick the right plan or the wrong plan, that's gone up, you know, 22%. There's 52 plans that Blue Cross offers and 52 plans that MVP offers. And, you know, all of them go up based on their loss ratios for those insurance companies. And, you know, uh, it's a... It's a lot, a lot of times it's a dog chasing its tail because if you have a small increase last year and everything doesn't work out equally as well as it did last year for you, then you need a big increase just to keep up with where you were. So, um, you know, 10% is, um, it's a lot of money. It's a big increase, but it's not going to pay for the whole increase for every single person. And that's probably life too. Uh, so 
And I want to make sure that you read the part when you know I said at the beginning that when we moved to this, when uh, uh, Health Connect, uh, for lack of a better term, Obamacare came into the workforce, and all employee, all employers under 100 employees had to offer a plan through the health insurance exchange. Uh, we moved away from the paternalistic approach that we used to have saying, well, here's three health plans, um, pick one, but you're going to pick one of the three that we offer. We decided to shift gears and say, we're going to provide you money and then let you be the consumer to buy what you want. And since we did that, we have weighted um, inflation far to a far greater degree than we have weighted the premium increases. And we told the employees that, you know, we can't keep up with double digit increases every single year. We're going to have to take into consideration the inflation. So I think our increases over the last eight to 10 years have been moderated and tempered by that. But it's putting us in a position where, you know, if you, if you, I mean, if you just went with inflation, it's an 8.2% increase, right? So 10% isn't too much above that. Chris, you have anything? Yeah. So I just found out that my health insurance program is $1,100 a month um, with an $11,000 deductible. Um, Set aside all the inflationary issues that my household and everybody else's household is up against. Um, Bob, your solution to this problem of just throwing money at the problem made my anxiety a little deeper because unfortunately there's things that have come to me this summer within this municipality that if we're corrected and run properly wouldn't cost the taxpayers a thing because the inefficiencies if we're made efficient the savings alone would pay for this increase uh, unfortunately I mean I, I had planned on completely voting no on this tonight but the problem with that is is it's if this insurance increase goes through or didn't go through it would impact everybody in the municipality and everybody's not to blame in this municipality for what i'll call a tax the abuse of taxpayer dollars um i'm not going to get into those issues because this isn't the place in the public forum to do it. But I just kind of wonder when we're gonna stop rewarding bad behavior by just once again, voting pay or benefits through uh, without at some point saying enough's enough. The taxpayers are owed the respect to have things run the way they should be run. So, so you know, you say you don't want to talk about it in the public forum, Chris, but frankly, uh, the way you're talking, it sounds like I should just offer my resignation because- It's nothing to do with you. You well, always take it personal, Dick. Chris, they all work for me. Yeah. So if something is so egregious that the taxpayers wouldn't have to pay a cent for any of this, if something wasn't happening out there, it's happening on my watch. So either don't talk about it, or we got to talk about it in the public forum. And I'm not, I'm not taking it personally, but I'm just saying that I don't know. It, it's, it's a pretty serious allegation you're making. If somebody's asleep at the switch, and I wouldn't be you know, saying it, it, it's if, me. It, if it wasn't so serious that it didn't piss me off because I feel like the taxpayers aren't getting their money's worth. So I'm gonna speak up and say that obviously there's an issue that based on the agenda, what we need to get done is not going to fit into tonight's discussion. Right. I recommend that you reach out to Bill, whether you have or haven't in the past, I don't know. 
and then decide if it's something that wants to go on an agenda for a public meeting or wants to be talked about separately. That said, to follow up, Chris, you, you acknowledged this point and then went back. This, providing health insurance for the employees needs to happen regardless. So that issue is something that you, wants to be talked about separately, but it, the increase is the increase and we need to provide health insurance. It's it's not just it's not just about winning and recruiting. It is about recruiting and, and retaining employees, but it's also just people need to have health insurance. Um, so I don't have questions in favor. And if anyone else has questions or comments, is that your first or that question? Great, thank you. <laughs> Oh, Natalie, thank you. Hi, thank you. I can't figure out the digital hand. <laughs> um, I just wanted to add just as a comment that I also feel that, um, you know, with this vital employment environment, it's really very respectful <laughs> to the employees to to really be very thoughtful about this benefit. It's important that we retain all this investment we have with our employees and do the best we can for them. And I think the overall presentation of the history, how we've come up with our formulas um, is very helpful. And I agree that this recommendation for the 10% is, is appropriate. Um, and as Bill said, that it's not the Cadillac of insurances, insurance benefits among um, municipalities. So that's a note to be taken. We're doing the very best to try to um, be very respectful to our employees. It's, you know, to help them perform and retain them because it's, it's painful for us to have to start all over. If we... I do apologize, Chris. I should not have it. Don't. Uh, again, this isn't between you and I. No, no. I I understand that. I apologize for interrupting you and for. Uh, you got any thoughts, Cindy, or Lefty? Well, I definitely believe we need to increase the benefit as much as we can. <clears throat> I think it's. 10% given the economy right now, the job market. I think it's fair for the employees and I think it's fair for the taxpayers. And I think, like Bob said, everything retaining the employees, you've already invested in their training and education and stuff. And uh, the small amount keeps them there. That's you know, worth the effort. So well, I think we're come. ready to do something if you both. Yeah. Both boards. Call separate. Both boards need to vote. Yeah. Would you like to? I move say we adopt board. the town. Sorry. Think separate. Right. I move we adopt uh, adopt the town manager's proposal for insurance rate for the uh, E put in play, which is ten percent. Um, yeah, and then an increase in the stipend is outlined. Yeah, the proposal. I got is there a second to that? I'll second it. Motion has been made. Oh, there's. Oh, oh well, you're just thinking that you guys are going to be there. The motion has been made and seconded to adopt the manager's recommendation of a 10% increase in the stipend for the. EFUD employees for the coming year. Any further questions? Uh, does it do one forty-five? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Increase for those who don't get the line of item. Including the ten forty-five. Um, any further questions? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Motion passes. And we'll entertain a motion. Oh, Mike, do you have a question before we? Yes, yes, I do. Uh, 
Mike, we can't hear you. Your service is cutting out. Can you use the chat? No, we it's a chat off, but you can turn off its video if you can, Mike, or just wait a minute and start again, but we were losing you. Yeah, cut your picture. My hand. Man. See if that, does that work better now? A lot does. better. Okay. Um, I hear loud and clear Chris's concerns, but I'm also a little bit on a different side. We're in a environment that we're going to see new employees come into our municipality. And in order to attract them, we need to have decent health care coverage. As much as we all want to put our head in the sand, insurance costs are just rising. I hate it. I'm dealing with it right now with my stepmom. Uh, you know, you know, medical costs are through the roof and it's 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 no fun. So I think we do have to support our municipal employees. And, you know, as much as it's it's a hard bite of the apple to take, I think it's a necessary bite of the apple. It's not that we're paying, you know, I don't believe that we're paying a Cadillac, you know, you know, premium price to uh, employees. I think we're paying reasonable uh, health care benefits which I think our town employees are entitled and in the future, we're going to need that to incur to attract other employees. That's all I have to say. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. So I'll uh, take a motion for on behalf of the town. Uh, I'll move that uh, we approve the recommended 10% increase in $145 stipend for those not taking advantage of the health plan. Have a second. Second motion. Stipend is outlined in the memo because it's not 145. So there's, there's oh, okay. as outlined in the memo. You have that, okay. okay. Has been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? I just want to say thank you to Bill for having both boards. I think, again, it's walking that line between. I wish none of us needed to be in the business of providing insurance, <laughs> but since that is a discussion far beyond this table, um, I think this seems as fair as we can get a bulk vote. It's not it's of an increase that I'm going to get, but again, I think it's the right thing for our employees. So we do appreciate the work they do for the town. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? More abstention. Yeah. Thank you all. All right. And I agree with Alyssa. It would be great if this wasn't the problem of employers. Um, so the second item is really at the request of the boards. Uh, but I kind of articulated it here. So you each have extended a contract offer to Tom Likes, the, the person who you hired to become the municipal manager on January 1st. Uh, he will start working here on uh, October 31st as my deputy. And uh, as you all remember, the boards agreed that uh, the town would negotiate the compensation package for the new manager and there'd be an MOU between the two entities to um, help recover, to reimburse the town for a time that uh, the manager will work for EPA. Um, there are other town boards that the manager will work for the library commission and the cemetery commission in particular, but we've never done uh, any kind of payment between those entities. It would be it would be more transparency and budgeting, just so you could see how much time the manager spent in the library or in the cemetery commission. But um, the town pays for all that, it's only EFUD, it's a different municipality. So the only transfer is from EFUD to the town when it comes to the manager's position. I wrote the memo 
that is here before you on October 3rd. And I, I attached to it an old memo that was from 2009, uh, just as an example. And I apologize because I know I confused some of you by when you look at the old memo, thinking that that was the current formula. It is not the current formula. Um, cutting to the chase, back in, in 2018, after the village dissolved, uh, the village was moving away from its, uh, well, it moved away completely from having general government responsibilities. Uh, and it was only left now with the water and sewer departments and the, and the UBAC fund, basically the three, the three things that they did. There was no more police department. Um, the street department had gone away long ago, but it was really, it became a utility district. In 2017, when uh, the village was paying the most money it paid to the town, it was almost $140,000 a year that the village was paying to the town. After the village dissolved, police department went away. In 2018, the boards agreed that $100,000 was the right number. Uh, and then uh, going into 2019, uh, the EFUD commissioners asked for a little bit of a uh, uh, time study, if you will. So I had Karen in particular, who is the utility billing tax clerk, uh, keep track of her time. She did it quite uh, religiously, almost, almost to the point of uh, Bob Penukin's old example of setting an alarm clock every 15 minutes and figuring out what you've done for the last 15 minutes. Um, I, I didn't take as copious notes about my time, but uh, I, did, I, I did track my time, I think, well enough. And that's what shows up on this memo in the handwritten notes on the left-hand column. Uh, Karen at the time uh, spent about 55% of the time working for EFUD, and I was spending about 30% of my time. And then the bookkeeper was a nominal uh, 20 hours a month, which is about five hours a week. And Carla, uh, mostly as the uh, uh, EFUD treasurer, was working basically an hour a week, at, uh, four hours a month. And from that, uh, I used those percentages and then looked at the total compensation for all of those employees. So wages and salary, health insurance, retirement, social security, workers' compensation, unemployment insurance, all of that was uh, monetized to a, a total compensation. And then I multiplied Karen's total compensation by 55%, my total compensation by 30%, and then did the small calculations to the other two. And when we did that, we came up with uh, 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 about, was it 98,000? It dropped down a little bit below that. Uh, and, and at that time, we decided that we would then just, um, instead of having everybody keep this record of time, these people, that we did. once we got kind of got that base level, we increased it by inflation. So it must have been 2020 when the payment dropped based on the 2019 time study to ninety thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and then from then on it was increased by inflation. Um, and the most recent year, um, while inflation was running quite. Uh, a bit lower, even by the time we put um, the budgets to bed in January, inflation rate between 20, uh, from 2021 to 2022 had already bumped up. Uh, so we added 5%. So in 2022, the budget is $96,390. Now, the MOU that you talked about, as far as um, Tom's new contract is concerned, you talked about having an MOU 
to capture what the manager's cost was. I think what I just described is better because it's not just the manager who, who is employed by the town that works for e -Fund. I think for this year, we're fine. And even if you, um, I, I did the, uh, the math um, looking at what my compensation is now, and I don't know if I put this in the memo or not, I thought I did. But looking at my compensation and the compensation that Karen makes and everybody else, if you multiply the 96,390 by 1.08, the 8% that inflation is running, um, that would be very close to actually doing, you know, 55% of Karen's time and everything else. So I think for 2023, if you just multiply the 96,390 by the rate of inflation, you're good, except you've got, you're gonna have two months worth of comms time in 2022, because this equation or this formula is retrospective looking. In other words, we keep track of time. Bill Woodruff, public works director, keeps track of all his time, um, how much time he's worked for the highway, the water, the sewer. At the end of the year, he tells me how much time that was. I apply a similar formula to this to his total compensation and say, okay, he worked whatever, 43% of his time for the town in 2022. And then I did, you know, I, I spread that across the various departments, but the town pays EFUD that 43%. In 23 or in the following year, based on what it was in the current year, because I can't predict how much time he's going to spend working for the town. So the compensation and the hours is always retrospective looking. So if you just multiply the 96,390 by the rate of inflation right now for everything as is, it would be fine. How you want to deal with the two months worth of paying. Um, salary at what was it, 105, 115? No, mm -hmm. no, the 115 oh, stacks came in for, for the one, for one head, uh, you know, for the for the two months. Um, you know, my guess is, you know, he'll probably I would suspect that he would probably mirror my time during that two month period because he's going to be shadowing me and may give him assignments to do certain things. So for 2023, I think you can make it overly complicated or you can just say multiply it by 1.08 to 96,390 by 1.08 and then uh, pay 30% of time for November and December, have you but add that to the 96,390. Right? So the formula would be 96,390 times 1.08 plus 30% of 110,000 divided by 12. Divided by 12 times, times two. two times 0.3, right? right? So about 5,500. <clears throat> I, if I haven't confused you all, thirty percent for Tom. <laughs> um, had a question, and I probably didn't pay attention before there. But what is it the town clerk does for e fund that kind of isn't included when you know the town tax and? Yeah, so the town the town clerk doesn't even do anything for e fund. The town the the treasurer. So you've appointed a, a treasurer. So she does some work for EFOD um, as the town treasurer. She's got to balance all of the, uh, she's got to write the EFOD checks or sign the EFOD checks. She's got to balance the EFOD bank accounts. She's got to balance the EFOD investment accounts. So that's not the clerk that we appoint. And we don't put that clerk's money in our budget. 
Um, well, I'll have to look at that, Skip. Um, I thought we you, I mean, you do pay you pay the that's I'll have to look to see if you pay the village clerk and treasurer. The, the clerk, the work that the clerk does for EFUD is nominal, almost you know. Yeah. So what you pay in terms of your annual meeting motion, you you deal with that. But I've left that out of this equation now. This equation now is just, you know, so I guess it's probably in the base there, but it's four hours a month for the, the treasurer's time is what went into that base equation. I, I thought we had our own. You may. Treasurer. I mean, we appointed Karen, clerk and treasurer. So. You did appoint her clerk and treasurer, and I can't remember if you paid or as clerk and treasurer, if you just pay the clerk, but I, I, I think okay. it's a de minimis amount of money that you're talking about. But if you want to take that out, you can no, I, 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 a couple of other bucks. Here, what the town clerk was the town, the town clerk doesn't do anything. No, it, it was, should say the district, well, district clerk here. Um, so Woody, and as long as we have an engineer of the two EFA employees that keep track of their time spent on the town. Yeah, so the department has, so uh, Matt Jones at the wastewater treatment plant up until last week, Scott Guyette at the water department and Celia in the highway department, they keep track of the time that those people work back and forth for each other. And what I do at the end of the year for them is they'll send me information. This is the amount of, so Celia will tell, tell me that, um, you know, the highway department worked um, 50 hours for the sewer department and uh, 75 hours for the uh, water department. And then I'll get from the water employees and the or the water department department head and the sewer department head. We worked this many hours for the town highway department or the town fire department. And what I do is basically say, okay, um, I just wash it out because you know it's, I look at the amount of money, but most of that gets washed out, and in the end, there might be. 20 hours worth of time that you have to get paid for. And I include that in the next year's budget. So in the line item for the town to pay uh, for the public works director, I include anything that is owed to the water or sewer department. On the revenue side for the EFUD, I make sure that goes into the right department and I do the same thing for the sewer. So all of the Public work staff who work in the field keep track of time that should be cross charged. And I, I include it in the memo every year at budget time, and you probably look at it and move on pretty quick. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a relatively small amount of them. I guess my question would it be helpful to write that that occurs in the assembly use so that? Sure, sure. sure people would know that that needs to be tracked back and forth. Yeah, I can I can do that. See, all of that could be eliminated if it was all under <laughs> 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 Amen. 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 Back in the day. Back in the day. So what is that? What is your rub about that going to change? <laughs> well, you're sort of seem like you're complaining to us. No, no, I'm not, not complaining. Fault. I'm just making a suggestion. <laughs> We're happy where we are. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and you know, speaking of that, and this so is it. a little bit outside of this discussion, but um, <laughs> there's some things. The town authorized me to hire uh, Mike Gilbar to do some work to update um, mm -hmm. policies to deal with uh, comments made by the auditor and everything else. Um, and, you know, 
the in my conversation with Tom after he was hired, you know, I admitted to him that over time the chart of accounts for, for especially the town has grown and grown and grown. And and budgeting is a little bit more complex than it needs to be. Ideally, what would happen, and you could do this, the town could do it on its own for the town itself. But you know, I've had thoughts that you know the the uh, the structure of our budget with all these departments as they are would have to stay. But I think it'd be much more efficient in terms of explaining to the voters what we have to just have a personnel department. And every employee is listed in that personnel department. So department. So the total wages of the town is on one line instead of having to add up 15 mm -hmm. lines that we do not. The total insurance benefits, the total social security, the total um, health insurance, all of the expenses for personnel could be in that uh, personnel department. And then there would be revenue to that personnel department from all the other. So the highway department would have one line that would say personnel costs, and the highway department would have to buy personnel yeah. expenses from the personnel department. Yeah. And it would be much more, I think, much more transparent to the voters, much easier to see what they're spending. But I'll have that conversation with the next time. <laughs> Maybe it can be done. So what do we need to do next? I'm pull this for <laughs> I've done the calculations more of that. Um, oh my God. But, uh, if we calculate in 8% uh, employee for inflation, then the new figure would be 104,101. And then we add uh, 5,500, which is 30% of Tom's time for November and December. And that's a grand total of $109,601. Okay. So the formula is good, but the, the end product isn't quite good enough. Mm -hmm. So Tom is. $5,500 for two months, but you got to add social security and retirement and health insurance benefits to that in order to get the total compensation you do for it. So if you can agree on the formula, 8% on the base and then 30% um, of Tom's total compensation for oh, two oh, months, oh, then I can figure out the number. So are you, if we agree on this, you would draft an MOU that yep. would come back that we would yeah. And I, I would like to be able to bring that MOU back to each of the boards independently to spare you another joint meeting. Sounds I'll have great. to go to the meeting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Pearson. So that 8%, that's, if I'm understanding it right, that's just for the ensuing year. Yeah. I mean, I don't suspect inflation is going to drop to two percent in the next if, year. But even if, but it, even if it does drop, what you, what you're doing is just to the 2022 costs for what exists now. You're just simply recognizing that inflation is running at eight percent, and then if it goes to 16% next year, you multiply that by 16%. That's how the formula works. It's just how much they're paying you. Um, at some point, it gets it could get out of whack. And yeah. every once in a while, you probably should have the time study. And maybe the time to do that is next year, is first year here. But my expectation is this first year here isn't going to be a normal year. Mm -hmm. I, I would I would probably wait a year. But you know, if you only adjust the base by inflation, that assumes that all of the town's costs are being adjusted by inflation all the time. And you know, in years when inflation has been really high, we haven't always matched wage of salary increases to inflation, or they might be. So at some point, you probably ought to do a rework at the at the base. Is it practice to put in the MOU to be revisited in two years? You can you can do. 
it just seems like it's one of those things that we'll say, yeah, let's revisit it. And then 10, 12, 15 years are going to go by before we do. So it might be prudent to have the wording in the actual document. <laughs> well, if the, if the next manager, and I say this with a little trepidation, but if, if he is says, um, Anal about numbers is on <laughs> He'll be doing it on regular basis, and hopefully he'll be he'll try to be fair to both uh, both municipalities, as I've always tried to do, to you know share all the information and to to try to make sure that uh, everyone's getting a fair shake and not being taken advantage of. So I'm hopeful that he will do that as well. So. I think the more important part of this MOU is the percentages rather than the dollar amounts, because you know people's salaries and stuff are kind of fixed. It's the percentage that really yeah. right. It's the percentage of time, and you'll you'll have to reestablish a, a base on that. Right. It's it's again in 2023 will be um, you know an anomaly kind of year because the two people in the municipal office. That are the biggest factors in this equation are uh, the municipal manager and the utility billing tax clerk, both of whom are going to be brand new, both of whom are going to have to be relying on others to help them with their you know, getting up to speed. So, right. On behalf of the select board, I move that we instruct the manager to prepare an MOU, um, recognizing that we would like the payments between the municipalities to be the 22, 2022 payment of 96,390 adjusted by inflation plus 30% of the total compensation for the, is it assistant municipal deputy. Man, deputy municipal manager? We have a motion, do we have a second? I did, I, I would say you're gonna come back to us to approve the MOU. I don't know if it needs to be a motion, I'm just trying to. And the, the inflation rate that's typically used is the inflation rate that, that I get in January. So the most up to date is 8.2%, and that's you know September to September. But uh, I think to be fair to both sides, that the inflation rate that we use should be the one that's normally used <laughs> when we're when we're doing this. So when we problem with the, bu the budget, we'll figure out the CPI at that time for the most recent year end. Second. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Further discussion from the select board? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or any abstain? Great, thank you. I think more is necessary. <laughs> Edgy. Edgy. <laughs> Love it. Well, you gotta say you so moved it. We need to agree to that. Well, just okay. That's our state time on it. I hope we will be uh <laughs> <laughs> manager to figure out how to uh force the money for the discussion we did. <laughs> but is there a second? <laughs> A uh, motion has been made second to authorize the town manager to prepare an MOU with the same numbers as uh, approved by the select board. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion <laughs> passed. Okay. okay. I do have an executive session for an evaluation of a public employee that. Um, uh, both boards, I would, I would like to have both boards involved in. Um, for those who are interested, the public employee is me. So, um, um, and uh, because we have two people on Zoom, we're going to have to stay in this room. Right. So that's going to mean Lisa and Lisa. Have to, Lisa, Lisa. <laughs> thank you very much. And yeah. folks on Zoom, I'm going to put you in the waiting yeah. room and let you back in when we're out. I just, um, is someone yeah. making a motion? Oh, um, I, mean, I move that the select like board enter. Oh. Who's going to second me? I move that the select board enter an executive session for the purpose of evaluation. And Roger seconded. Hold on. <laughs> you're doing so many things. You're doing great. Keep it up. Mm -hmm. Good time. So, uh, oh, sorry. Close the executive session at nine. Yes, she got it. 
Sorry, it's the rain delay still on. <laughs> Gonna be late game. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. Pardon? I said thank you all for coming. Oh, I appreciate it. I got three quick things before we take one. Oh, yeah. Thank you. They took no action in after executive session. Thank you. Um, I just had three quick things and then we'll get out of here. One is I wanted to make sure all of you knew we've got 95% of the planning for the open house um, for Bill and Carla here for Saturday, November 5th, 1 to 4. Uh, so uh, you're all invited. You know, hope to be here and uh, you've got no Ingrid has planned to <laughs> be here pretty much, keeping me on track <laughs> and things. So, want to make sure everybody knew that. Should um, put her on the plane for this. No, we've got an application. And then same thing, I had agreed with Roger to talk about the sewer system on November 6th. Okay. It's been overcome by events for 51 South Main Street and yeah. planning all of this. So I'm not going to be ready. So I would ask for the second meeting in November, wherever that is. So the 21st versus the 7th. Okay. okay. And uh, the last thing is I'd like to, uh, I'm thinking I'm going to plan another um, pancake breakfast. Um, to give all the uh, volunteers that have served on uh, other committees and boards and kind of treat it like their opportunity to, you know, thank Bill for all his time and that we would pay to put on that pancake breakfast. Chris is really good at making coffee. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it at the fire station or St. Leo's. But one or the other, whatever it be. Um, no, it'll be the first part of December, okay. in between Christmas trees. <laughs> uh, so I'll work with Bill to make sure it's a day that he's going to be here and that it's not going to snow. Um, you can uh, you can guarantee snow or not snow. <laughs> to make it I didn't know that. I didn't know. I just a claim. Earned it. Thank you. Steph. Those highway guys really. So this is what you are, right? Employees too, or just? Yes. Okay. Employees. So you said volunteers. And well, I yeah. Everybody who served on a board. Yeah. Or, okay. So like you used to do in the spring. Yeah. Then. I'll get a notice out. Get closer here, and uh, that was an opportunity to say thank you to Bill, and I was going to ask Ingrid to show her PowerPoint that she's put. Um, of all the people in the staff in the past who work here and so anyway. Wait, okay. keep us posted. Keep us posted. Yes, I will uh, do that. Thanks. I had fun kind of doing it. And, you know, we did them pretty well up to Irene and then that kind of interrupted things and the pandemic and all that stuff. So. All right. Well, thank you for your time. All right. Join meeting adjourned. Yeah. Do you need a motion to adjourn for you? Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Natalie. Thanks. Night. Have thank a good trip you. back tomorrow. We'll do. All right. So. Uh, Try to get together a short time before tomorrow night. Thank you. Yeah, we'll take that. Yeah, I thought. Um, <laughs> uh, Alyssa, we can't leave that. Thank you. Yeah, Carol, can I help you? Yeah. Um, probably. Gotcha. Thank you. I know I have a lunch meeting and then Carol calls me to get some of my friends. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and a boss and 39 o'clock. Um, well, say 10 o'clock. Okay. Oh, you think that's no. Or I don't know. The open house um, from one to four. Right. Just to be held here in this room. It's an open house. Open house. The other thing there. Yeah, there's a. The other Yeah. All right. We're going to carry it on. Um, so Bill, I don't know if uh you move this or maybe just Karen put it the agenda for the 1020 ARPA meeting under manager. That was actually Alyssa's suggestion. It was on under select board items before, but oh. I was hoping to get the EFUD people out of here. Uh, so okay. I just moved the bottom, but thanks. Unfortunately, that's okay. Best like the plants couldn't get them out of here anymore quickly than they would have so my hope was to simply outline a very broad agenda and then you know split it into it, but then have a little bit of direction for the next couple of days to prepare for the meeting. So what I had thought was for us to come with our um, goals, ideas, priorities, obviously for you as well for the ARPA funds as one part or piece of the meeting. And then the second piece of the meeting is thinking about how to solicit public feedback. That's been something we continue to hear is that the public wants input. Um, so that part of that meeting would be discussing the process of soliciting input um, so that we can go forward with that. That's fine. Okay. At the present moment, staff doesn't have any recommendations. Okay. Um, you know, I thought the idea of the meeting was to allow the select board to have some discussions amongst yep. themselves uh, with some input from the public, and then from that we would, would go further. I mean, there are certainly things that I think we've talked about a little bit, but I, I don't think that I'm going to be making any, you should do this or you should do that with it right now yeah and to clarify it's not to make decisions but to no, just yeah no. brainstorm and have that okay perfect um so that's sort of what i just wanted to address in terms of the 10 20 meeting and then just also make sure that we've all it'd be great to come as prepared as possible knowing obviously it's going to be a conversation and brainstorming session but um you know having some of those ideas and things with us at the time do you recall call when, when the final number that's left after a couple of giveaways that we have it? We only had one giveaway, right? Just the fifty thousand dollars. No, we made a commitment. Uh, we can do it seventy six thousand. We did it something to us to us a yeah. ice center. That wasn't at the moment. No, that was tax money. I don't think that that was our yeah, it was our fund. Yeah, yeah. Because it was that was and then the six hundred was e five. Right. That didn't go through. Um what was the C V fiber commitment? Ice center. And then you have ninety in the high language based on the year. Wasn't C V fiber fifty thousand? Yeah. So if we include the ninety, it would be three sixteen out. I'm doing that separately. Ninety was for the No, one hundred for the ice center. Ninety was potentially for highway, or maybe we just right. Yeah, but we just say it is, and then we're committed. Bill has the capacity to just write what we have committed at this point, or we. I mean, we just practice yeah. it. Seventy-six for Wasi and no, seventy-six was for fire. Maybe was for Wasi and then fifty for CV driver. Yeah. Um, so one, I just wanted to clarify, are we starting at 7 p.m.? I know we had discussed six, but that was under the premise Lieutenant White can join us, which he cannot. Okay. So I didn't know if we all wanted to discuss. Um, we had one number, Chris, so you'll be here. We had told Tom six, so before we change it, I would want to check with Tom because he's planning to attend. So I'm okay with leaving it at six unless anybody strongly wants to move it, and then we could check in with Tom. Well, six and five. 
Are you holding me? Does that work? Can you do six, Mike? By the 20th. He can't be here, probably, oh, yeah. right? Right. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. I might or might not be there in person. We're we're not sure exactly when we're coming back to Vermont. A lot's going to depend upon what's going on at the hospital, but both of us need to get back for some various reasons, and we'll probably at some point uh, come back down south again. So okay. everything well, we'll in be, flux. We'll leave it at six then, and then whatever you're able to do, obviously we understand and we're ready to, even if yeah. you're able to zoom in. Zoom, Zoom would be great, but I might be there. You know, we, we Deb was thinking about because she had some things that she had to do on Thursday, so we might travel north. Great, but I I'm not going to guarantee that. Um, anything else about the Thursday meeting before we talk about our next meeting, eleven seven agenda? I think your outline is good broadly. I appreciate okay. that we're putting time on the calendar, though I wouldn't have picked a week with multiple other meetings for your Well, we don't think we have six meetings when we plan this. Um, I don't want to kick your hand down the road. No, I, so I appreciate that we're doing it, and I appreciate that we have set time to kind of have that strategic conversation, you know, just putting some of my cards on the table early. Like, I don't think we as a select board or we as a select board certainly at this meeting are going to be at a in a place of like making decisions mm -hmm. or finalization. I just think in terms of public framing, this is the beginning of the conversation in terms of what, as you said, kind of that second part of like what the process looks like and what thoughts we all have are and that there will just definitely be a lot of follow-up. So just um, certainly maybe folks will come and provide yeah. input. But and I think obviously there'll be the opportunity as a public meeting to have input, but I think we've all discussed needing a broader outreach for public input versus just the folks who can attend a certain meeting. So I wanna talk about that. Um, and then I just wanted to address for the 11-7 agenda and work to get in the habit at the end of meetings of talking about the upcoming agenda, knowing that they do change. Um, we originally had the deadline for the um, housing task force submissions as today, we were going to discuss it, but we've still been getting emails and expressed interest. So I'd like to recommend that we extend it through to the next meeting, which is 11-7, and then discuss the candidates at that point. And I can forward any emails I get before that meeting as well. How many have you received today? Three. Two of them just came yesterday. Um, so great. that's, I think if we repost on Front Porch Forum too, we might have some additional folks. And I would propose we just have the deadline a little ahead of that meeting. Yes. So we can get them ahead of time. And to clarify, this is we all agreed on the 10 folks, four of them are, you know, set, EFA, Planning Commission, RW, Select Board. And then these would be the six folks we would be able to appoint. Did, boards you, did you originally post on Trump Board Forward to Canon? No one has at this point. That's part of why okay. we're spending it makes sense. So we'll, um, okay. So let's do that. And the deadline would be. Like the uh, I don't know the Wednesday before to give us time to look yeah, at things or that's a a seven so it would just extend it to Wednesday uh, November second. Yeah. How many total members do you say? We said up to ten. We said two. Yeah. Two. Yeah. That was a reduced number. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'll tone it down. <laughs> <laughs> My general feeling is if someone is interested and wants to be in the room, they're welcome. Um, great. The other piece is the social media policy. We're going to put that discussion there and I'll come with some, I'll send ahead of time and come with some um, documents and background mm -hmm. ideas to have that conversation. Um, and then we, on the 7th. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then I don't know what else currently is going to be there, but knowing now that Skip is not going to do the steward presentation, um, do we want to include some time for the short-term rental conversation as broached by some members of the public today? Yeah, that's important. Yeah, okay. So we'll add that to 11.7. And then um, I can reach out to Brett to let him know. 
But yeah, I think we should also ask staff, like Steve and Bill. Yeah, yeah staff, so yeah, we can have a political policy conversation, but there's a piece around what we have the ability to implement and the political will to implement. Mm -hmm. And it's likely through zoning and yeah, it seems like maybe so um, again, yeah. Alyssa, can you help create a list of folks who we should at least invite to the conversation? Like planning commission staff. And then we want to put, we want to leave room like 30 minutes on the agenda for that conversation, like realistically. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm one of those are I leave the board. Yeah, it's unknown to me. Oh, mm -hmm. Question I. Yeah, I mean, see, yeah, you know, in the discussion, but if we don't have the authority to make any rules, what are we talking about? And, and the legislature has been rather uh, silent and unfitting um, about this issue. And Roger is right. They we have only the authority to regulate what the state we have said. Right. So the state says we regulate. So some towns are doing things though that are worth taking a look at. Well, some some and... towns are doing things, but some towns like Burlington have have charters as well. Right. We give them much broader, right. you know, give them additional authority beyond what the state statute provides to mm -hmm. towns like ours that right. operate under general law. So I've already made a note to myself to try to find out whether we have authority to, to regulate this or not. We don't have any authority to regulate um, this water, you know, right. the whole issue of um, yeah. septic system mm -hmm. status. Right. And so and if we end up not having any authority, then our recommendation is to take it to the legislature? I, I, that's what I would say. Um, we received some, I mean, I haven't obviously looked at it, but um, yeah, I think, the, you know, talking with planning commission about what can be done via you know those bylaws etc but um if you also think of who else would be important to have in that conversation that would be great between now and the seventh i'll be getting yeah i was like no less than, no less than an opinion Two from the lct whether we have authority and more than likely, I'll probably talk to Joe McLean at six of pages mm -hmm. year to make sure that we have authority. Yeah. The only thing about adding it to the because 21st is if we have to yes. get it done. If we're not on a good legal basis, we'll you know, the lawyers and yeah. uh, cut our feet out from underneath us. So we'll be nice to a lot of people's time. Yeah. All right. So other just you know i i'm sorry that i was nervous yeah. but at the previous meeting where we had things the other things we had penciled in were sewer which we've said have changed maybe parks input which is just to say the next steering committee meeting is on thursday and at some point we had the open house and i think they're going to present at one of our meetings i don't know when that is steve is in contact with the consultant but just to say that will likely be a november meeting and just to say the other one we have this noise ordinance question there no. so um There's again short-term rental seems like the place to go i'm just yeah. sharing that information with you all while we're on the agenda you can move steward to the 21st because that's what he skipped proposed Anything else on that point <laughs> of manager's items that <laughs> great? <laughs> um, so the next is the Anderson appeal. I don't know the correct title. Do we want to move to executive session? Yes, you, if you want to talk about it, move to executive session. Uh, Chris uh, more or less suggested he wanted to talk about it in the email after I sent that email last week. Mm -hmm. So if the board wants to talk about it, we need to do it in the executive session. Okay. And Alyssa, uh, I, I apologize. The motions that we made at the last meeting are what we need to make if we're going to go into the regular session and talk about it. Hi, here are the motions. I move to find that general public knowledge of the details of pending litigation involving the town of Waterbury would clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage. That's a motion. Chris, a second then. Further discussion? 
All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. I know I had to copy the first motion. Uh, oh, sorry. I move to enter into executive session to consider pending litigation involving the Grayson subdivision and related confidential attorney client communications made for the purpose of providing legal advice to the town. Excellent. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We will move into executive session at 9.39 p.m. Thank you. 21 minutes. Well, All right. Um, one we'll quick question before I walk out. The deadline that you said for the... So we have an exited executive session at 10.26, taking no action. I'll move to adjourn. Second. Before we go, anything else? Thank you all. We are adjourned.